Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. Ruth is a visiting professor at a large university in Ireland, and Claire is an associate professor at a primarily undergraduate university in Northern California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Claire. And I'm Ruth, and today we're talking about community. But before we do that, Claire, how was your week? My week was good. I wanted to report back. I've been talking about this final project that my students were doing, oh. and I was like, oh, it's such a big job. This is horrible. Um, and one part of it was we went on the field trip um, where we went on our university's research vessel. And that was part of the challenge was I was like, oh, I have to get ready for this. It's so difficult. But anyway, we went, and it was super fun. And now in retrospect, I'm like, oh, it's definitely worth doing. And actually, it's going to be so easy next year because I'll just oh, write up some great. notes. And I know how it works now. And it's long, you know, yeah. So anyway... I had been feeling like it was too much to plan, but as once it started coming together, I got excited about it, and it all went well, and it was really fun. And it's actually not that much work. The problem was just learning how to do it, and it should be easier now that I know how to do it. <laughs> no, but I, everything you're saying, the word field trip is giving me anxiety, but then field trip on a vessel, I'm like, oh, I'm so not But here. it was so cool, and actually I'm going to talk about it later in the episode too. But yeah, the first, so there were two different lab sections that went on the field trip, and... Um, First of all, we met there, so I didn't have to organize transportation or anything. And these are these are upper division students, so th- I felt like it was reasonable to expect them to figure out how to get there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there were two different days we went. The first day, it was downpouring, and everybody got oh. completely soaked. But it was still like an adventure and fun, I think. Um, and then the second day, it was like the most beautiful day ever. Oh, nice. <laughs> And it was so like so funny that just depending on which lab section you were in you either got completely drenched and freezing oh i thought everyone got to do both so no everyone i only did both (laughs) but everyone else only had one or the other so that's pretty cool um yeah so i'll I'll, I'll, i'm gonna mention that later but how was your week my week was good i am it's kind of related to today's topic but my uh, sister was away and she has been my swimming buddy so i've been Ah. going on my own and so uh-huh. I kind of found myself chatting a lot more with the other, because at first oh. I was quite anxious. Like, I don't think I would, like, and I think it's not recommended to go in by yourself, like, if no one else mm-hmm. is there. So I was like, well, those people, and every time I went, it was absolutely jammers with people. So that was not oh. an issue. And it was sort of fun. I mean, I'm very glad she's back and it's super nice to see her all the time, but it was sort of fun, too, to, like, have a bit of chat with mm-hmm. all of the people. And I'm, like, restraining myself, but I just want to be like, who are you people? Like, what are you doing? Like, but then I'm there, too, and I'm like, why are you here? Like, what is this about? Like, why do we do this weird thing that we're doing? So it's, um, yeah, I'm feeling Do it, you but... think that now that you've had a bit of a chat with all these people and your sister's back, like, will you be chatting more with these other people? Yes, I think so, definitely. Although she came back and, like, I hadn't seen her so we kind of got too chatty and then I was like, I'm really cold. Like we need to get out. Like I kind of got distracted. And so we've yeah. been in this ocean for too long. <laughs> we, need to, we need to get back out. And then I don't know if I told you before, like Point Break is one of my favorite movies. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the one made in the 90s, not the more recent one. But um, I'm not a snob about remakes, but that remake is horrendous. But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast we could do. But um, we just make a lot of jokes about being in point break and basically we're like surfers even though like i'm still hanging onto the steps most of the time when i get in the water still riding those waves up and down exactly 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 so we're very tough but um yeah so i love it it's great it's definitely and it's getting easier as the days are getting a little bit warmer for sure oh good 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 Mm -hmm. good you can stay in a little longer maybe yeah i feel like with irish people and this was always true that like and, like, the sunshine isn't that rare, but, like, mm-hmm. everyone goes out if it's not right. Ra- you know what I mean? Like, literally uh, yes. everyone is outside because you don't know when it's going to happen again. That's kind of nice that it's like, okay, now is sun. Mm-hmm. Everybody, whatever you're planning to do, now is not the time to do that. Now is the time to go outside. And I feel like it was a little more like that where we lived in Northern California. Sure, but it's so foggy. Right. Like, when I went to grad school, I went in Oregon. Mm-hmm. I remember. Oh, did you? In April, it was a sunny day. And of course, me and the person I lived with at the time were like outside reading with our books out, like like camped out on the lawn. And people were like, like, settle down. 
you know but it was like because it was literally sunny every day from April to October uh, and you're like oh this is just everyone can be complacent because you know what's going to happen but we were like plenty of sunshine yes around. exactly so yeah that's funny so I have a bit of a ridiculous quote oh good this week yeah I'm, I'm not sure I've ever that's, that's never not been true but have you ever heard it's like a ridiculous song by this band well, I'm going to say from the 80s but maybe not like Poison is oh, the name of the band I've only heard of them but I don't know them very well well they have a very dramatic Every Rose Has Its Thorn song uh huh and I was playing it for the girls and it was just really funny because the lyrics are like every rose has its thorn every night has its dawn and every cowboy has a sad sad song but oh. it was just really funny because they were like it was like they were talking about the SATs they were like mm, thorn is to rose is not the same as sad song is to cowboy and they were really getting into the minutiae of like surely it should be every dawn has its night and like it was just I was like yes all of that is true and sometimes to just make the song work you gotta mm-hmm. I don't know but they were like well that's that seems like lying to me and I was like well, <laughs> but it was just I was like I don't know how to explain this ridiculous rock song from the 80s that's but anyway. so funny applying hardcore logic I know the so lyrics. they're still they were humming it anyway so obviously that's, that's where good. maybe they'll understand that it still can be appealing even if logically right. not sound so uh-huh yeah uh-huh something yeah. lyrical about it anyway yes and so tell me so we're talking about community today and i just realized you know there is a show about community college oh, there is and i've it's never seen community. it and everyone oh, speaks I used so to watch it. okay yeah so we're not talking about that show or no, if we are i'm talking... really unprepared for this episode because <laughs> i don't but, um, uh, yes yeah so we're talking Um, at least I'm planning to talk about uh, student community, like fostering student community and and what builds student community and and whatnot in our department. Yeah. So, yes. And I think you sent me a text about it. um, And just like, I mean, it's always important, but I feel Mm -hmm. like in this transitional time as we're coming back from... From everyone being separate on Zoom. Yes. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so back to my cool field trip that now mm. I'm super excited about. I'm going to do every year. Um, one student, so so it was the day after the field trip, and uh, we had lecture, and this was the first time I'd seen all the all the poor Monday lab students who'd gotten drenched <laughs> and freezing. And I was like, oh, it's so nice to see you dry <laughs> and warm. And anyway, we were talking about that, and one student came in and he was saying, wow, it was just so meaningful to have this adventure with his classmates especially after having had so much time on Zoom yeah. and to just have this time together doing this unusual adventure together. He just found it really meaningful. And he specifically said, before graduation, it was so nice to have Aww. that. And I hadn't really thought about that being one of the perks of this field trip. You know, I thought about all these things like, oh, they're going to do a project from start to finish and collect their own samples and they'll get to go on this research vessel and yada, yada. But I hadn't thought about the community building aspect of it, and um, I'm definitely going to consider that one of the pros of doing this in the future. Potentially, you know, I'm sure everybody <clears throat> didn't feel that way necessarily, but um, it really was an adventure, and I think it's it's so meaningful that they got to do that together. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of graduating seniors and lots of people who'd been doing lots of work together got to do this together, and so so that's yeah, just a reminder that student community is part of all these things that we're doing yeah and it's so funny like I feel like especially in the beginning of the pandemic like everything was boiled down to its essential yes you know and I'm sure totally and like whatever you did on that research cruise I don't know probably maybe I'm saying making this number up and it's because I don't know anything but like 90 minutes of actual Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and like but then it's like not all of the magic exactly. that's happening with that. And so... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if I had tried to boil it down to bare bones in my mind, it would have been like, well, it'll be really meaningful that for them to be able to take their own samples wherever they want to and then work with real samples and real data and come up with real interpretations. And so that's why we're going. And also, isn't it cool that our university has a research vessel that the yeah. students get to go on and we should take advantage of that and it'll be cool that they'll get to go. That's kind of what I would have boiled it down to. But there was so much more of just them bonding and being on this adventure together and like experiencing the storm, drenching them or experiencing the beautiful day, depending on which lab period they were in, together. Um, 
and having this experience together. So that, that was just really striking to me, that yeah. that was such a meaningful thing for this student and, and potentially for others as well. Excellent. Yeah. It's, and yeah. it's so good. It's like, I mean, I'm sure you would have appreciated it no matter what, but like, especially after what that student said, it's particularly yes. meaningful. And exactly. It, you know, and I know who that student is, but like, it's just like they started during the pandemic. You know what I mean? So like, mm-hmm. it just really, they lost all of that experience of what it would right. be like to start together. And yeah. yeah. So at least they got to end together. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. So what about you? What's What's working for you with student community? Yeah, I think community is something I have thought a lot about because I think mm-hmm. I think in general the community in physics is difficult and a little problematic at times, you know, and so I think it can be hard sometimes to create community in physics that isn't sure. very stereotypical stuff. That is mm-hmm. fine in its own right, totally, but it's just sometimes it's the only way to participate in things, if you know what I mean. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think community... And I think it has very pragmatic benefits too, both for like the professor where like I really noticed it when there was zero community that like everyone was asking me everything Mm. instead of each other. Do you know what I mean? Like my email volume during the pandemic was insane Mm -hmm. because people just didn't have access to when did she say the test was or whatever those questions were. So I think community can be just really beneficial just on like a workload level and then also Mm -hmm. in like retention and just students having a good time and all of those things so I think I think I've talked about this on here plenty of times before but back where we were we had something called crafter noon which was super fun Um, Mm and and then we also had the paranormal physics society which felt a little bit more like there was some barriers there I think we made it clear you didn't have to believe in ghosts to come to the paranormal and you could Uh just come and eat and it was fine but Crafternoon, I felt like was super accessible to absolutely everybody because mm-hmm. you did not have to. You could just come and color or do your homework or whatever. But I think there's something, and I wonder is this true a little bit with your crews, where like if you brought everyone out and put them in a circle on the grass and you were like connect and share your feelings, <laughs> like it just is so stressful. But when you have a shared enterprise mm-hmm. or you're like I think so. working on stuff, it's so good because then you don't necessarily. Like I I got all of this from going to like knitting groups and if you're mm-hmm. just not in the mood you can just sit silently and knit and there's no issue. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean and like Yes. So I think it's really great to have that shared industry. It's a great way That's, to connect. That makes tons of sense. I think you're right. Shared industry. If it was just like we're just going to hang out on this boat. I mean that'd be fun, but everybody's like, "Well, what are we doing? Why are we here?" Yeah. But if it's like, "Oh, we are collecting samples and also we have to travel to get the samples and we have to you know and like yeah then it yeah so, t- so will you tell us more about craft noon like how did you you started that as I recall and how did you like promote it how did you how did you make it happen it yeah like such a great community thing oh it was so good it was so fun um so it started off I thought it was going to be a one-time event and it was there was a group called swims which was the society for women in math and science mm-hmm. and the head of swims we kind of came up with it together and we decided to have this event and I was going to bring a bunch of craft supplies and people baked and then we would kind of all sit in this one room and it was such a good room for it because it had these really long lab tables lab benches so we could do all sorts of stuff and then it just kind of went from there like people were super into it so we Mm -hmm. like even that first week I had one table was knitting Another table was origami and another table was coloring. So you could do whatever you wanted. And and it was so great and empowering for the students because like one student, she was really good at origami. So she kind of took over that table and showed Uh people how to make a bunch of stuff. And so that was really cool. And then I was teaching people how to knit. And then so I think I think it is really important for community events to have access points for everybody Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like if it's like hang gliding club like that's do you know what I mean but like if there's craft club but you can come and color in or you can just eat chocolate like anyway so that was really good and then students asked for more so I was kind of doing it once in a while and then Mm -hmm. someone asked could we have it every week and so Mm -hmm. then it just became this thing it was like a Monday afternoon for two hours Mm -hmm. every week and the department bought us a sewing machine and Mm. 
it just I don't know, it was so good. And there was a point mm-hmm. where like and even though it was, it was a society for women in math and science, but it was definitely not limited to women. And at one point there was just I felt like in our building there was just so many men knitting all the time. And it was great. <laughs> I remember so, that. Yeah. So it was um I think I think I mean I think there's a lot of things in there because one is learning a craft. I think people find mm-hmm. it relaxing and it's mm-hmm. very much the opposite of academic work, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Because you just do a thing and then you have a thing you made. Like it's very instant mm-hmm. gratification and stuff. And then it's also like a relaxing skill mm-hmm. too. And then there was like I had an agenda to talk about when are things considered technology because like you oh. use a lot of math for a dress, but I never I kind of just got out of the way and let the students have their chats mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so that was super good so I think and then of course it fell apart after like during the pandemic sure and again it's just this thing where I almost felt like at the time I was like ooh, like we can boil everything down to these essential components and then it's like oh it doesn't work it just doesn't work to do that and you can't do afternoon boiled down to essential components no because like the magic is not there is no you know what I mean like it's the chat is the thing you know like Mm -hmm. you could send everyone knitting needles to do at home (laughs) but like it's not it's not doing the thing that you want to do knitting at home is great but that's a different thing than knitting as a group and I I really think you did it such an excellent job with crafternoon and the, the couple times I came by everybody just seemed so relaxed and hanging out and you know and I remember you specifically said oh you don't even need to do a craft because I I was like I don't know do I want to do a craft but I could just come by and hang out and then I like made some paper flower that other people were making and that was fun and just sitting around everybody just seemed so comfortable and it seemed like such a community building thing that everybody was just sitting around together and so I thought that was really cool that you you made that. Oh thanks Sue that's that's really lovely and it was a very it was a really special thing for me it was a little bit like I mean I think some of it like I do think it was a good idea and all of those things but there was a little bit of magic dust like those classes that just go really well like there was something about that group of people who kind of invested in going and stuff well I think following the magic dust is something you did you had this idea you did it and people were like oh this is cool and then you said well sure we can keep doing it you were following making it making it bigger yeah and I think um yeah I loved it it was great so I think and I certainly would not subscribe to people or what prescribe to people that they need to have a craft club in their university but just whatever it is it can it's really it's so good to do to have these other ways for students to interact sorry go ahead it also reminded me of fads versus fundamentals where it's Mm. like it doesn't have to be craft or noon that's just one of the ways of going about this fundamental of having some kind of community Totally. And I think, like, there is a thing, hmm, I think I've told you about this before, that, like, in Ireland, you go in as a cohort, and you Mm -hmm. stay as that cohort, which is good and bad. But, like, Mm -hmm. especially when people have their first year romances that Uh fizzle out, and then you're stuck with that person for four years. But I think there is a thing, like, it can be hard for some people to make community, Mm-hmm. especially like say I think we had a lot of transfer students and it can be hard mm-hmm. for them to kind of get integrated and mm-hmm. stuff so I think it's really cool to have those things and yeah. just informal like even I remember when I was in grad school in Oregon there was just like always this colloquium but the really important part was the tea beforehand mm-hmm. and like everyone went to that and it really mm-hmm. like it was like just a good time to chat with people Mm -hmm. and eat your cookies before you know but all of those things again when you're boiling down to like the bottom line and like what you should spend money on it's just it's so hard to capture Mm -hmm. the importance of those things I think cookies is a great example where like cookies would get me there yes but then the chat would be like oh "Oh, I actually really do want to go you know but I wouldn't go for the chat (laughs) to begin with totally but I could imagine someone looking at your field trip uh-huh. And being like, well, can you not go get the samples and bring it back and give, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Or like all of those things. And it just would miss so much of the point of what was actually. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, okay. What are you working on? Well, I'm working on 
trying to be more intentional about this, kind of like you were with Crafternoon, where like I happened upon this community mm. building experience with the field trip, and that was great, and I'm really glad that it was a meaningful bonding experience. But um, can I be more intentional about it? What else might be meaningful? And I'm particularly thinking about as graduation approaches. And I know for me, when I was approaching graduation in undergrad, that was a really emotional time where I, I just wasn't sure how to handle like the end of this time yeah. that I'd been spending in this department with these people, with these faculty members. And it was just kind of just really confusing that that was ending. Um, so how can I help students coming up on the end of their college community? Oh, I and, love um, that. Because it's yeah. so important to mark transitions. I think so. I think so. And so, I mean, the field trip, if I keep doing that, hopefully that will be helpful. Um, but maybe some more communal bonding experiences. I, I am also thinking we usually have an award ceremony at the end of the mm. semester, and usually I think of that as the kind of thing where all these graduating seniors and, and other people part of the community come and celebrate together. But I guess I think of it a little bit more for, like it's a, it's a gathering and we're celebrating the people who've won these awards, but I, I, it'd be cool to also think a little bit more about it being a marker towards the end of the semester, the end of this yeah. time that they're having together, and think a little bit more about um, acknowledging and celebrating that, or somehow, again, it's, it's kind of hard to, to synthesize these great meaningful moments, but just at least thinking about it in my mind and being on the lookout for following the magic dust, you know? <laughs> I think that's, you're really, you're really boiling it down to it, but like, I think, but it's so true, right? Because it is following the magic dust, because I've done other things that have landed like a lead balloon. Right. You know, it's so and... easy. Community building, <laughs> it does not sound fun. If you just say, we're going to have a community building exercise, I don't really think I'm going to be there, you know? But it could be. Yeah, yeah totally. I think, I think... Well, I don't, well, it's so weird. Okay, so I had one thing that, like, I did as a joke in the room mm -hmm. next to my office was where people would gather sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we would sort of, a couple of people, we would sort of joke about astrology quite a lot. And I like astrology, so we would sort of, like, it really winds physicists up to talk about astrology. Like, they get really <laughs> heated about it. So, but we decided, we were like, oh, we should make, like, a histogram of all the different star signs who have people okay. who do physics. Because... Maybe we can find out who are the most likely. Anyway, whatever. So we made, we called it an astrogram and we stuck it up in the room. And then we had stickers where you could write yours and put it in the different thing. Mm. And it was so funny seeing how many people did it. Oh, Even cool. if they absolutely hated astrology, they would still be like, okay, well, I am Pisces and like put it on there. And so, <laughs> That's fun. And it was like not a community building as in we're all sitting around doing it, but there was mm -hmm. just, it was there and people just sort of. That sounds fun. I mean, so, I would totally participate. That sounds great. I'll ask you afterwards. We'll figure out. <laughs> I think I know, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but then that was just the magic dust for some reason. Uh huh. And why? Who knows? Yeah. So maybe it's just about being aware and following the magic dust, like you did with Crafternoon. You know, you, yeah. you spotted it as a magic dust moment and made it into something awesome. And so. I'll try to be aware during this year's award ceremony and see if I can spot what would be helpful to keep going in the future more intentionally. Well, I think what you're saying, because not everyone gets an award, right? Exactly. So I think it's great then to use it also as an opportunity for everyone to, I don't know, turn to the person next to them and shake their hand and you know say goodbye or whatever it something, is. Something, like, something. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I definitely, I don't, like, it's an award ceremony. We're there to celebrate these people who have been the top of their class at whatever discipline in chemistry. So that's true. And we also usually celebrate, we also usually have, like, so-and-so is going to grad school here, and so-and-so mm. is going to an RU there, and so-and-so, you know, whatever. And so we have those kind of things. But, you know, okay, here's what I'm thinking. One year during the pandemic, we had everybody ha make their own, or at least have their own, PowerPoint slide that we were going to show on like oh, a lovely. rotating thing and everybody put a picture and everybody put like a fun experience like um, I really loved that time when you know my physics class did whatever or something like that so maybe we could do that and everybody gets their own slide and it oh, goes around I think I we should do that, that again I'm putting that down. okay I, that's so lovely and then it gives everybody a chance to 
Yeah, Honors every graduating and senior. And that'll just be going like before we start the award ceremony. So everybody gets, and that's also a common, what did you say, common industry. Yes. We're not just yeah. sitting around chatting. We're looking at these cool things and we get to totally. chat and be like, oh, so and so. I remember that moment, you know. I love it. Okay. Did I ever tell I'm you about a... the time, though, like in Crafternoon, where everybody accidentally got a bit high? Oh, no, what I... happened? <laughs> So it was not my finest moment. I was like, oh, we're going to paint mason jars. Because like everyone on campus in Humboldt drinks tea and coffee out of mason jars. Uh So I was like, let's make these mason jars our own. So everybody brought in like loads of nail polish. And we were all using the nail polish. And like the department chair came down and was like, do you guys know how smelly this is? And I suddenly looked up and everyone was bright red. Oh my and goodness. like people were certainly rowdier than they usually were, and I was like, "Oh, we need to open some windows." This, is- <laughs> I, can, I like, you know, when something the smell is building, you don't notice it. Mm-hmm. You don't notice it. And then it. I think like I went to because I was like, "Is he being a bit dramatic?" But then I went to the bathroom and came back, and I was like, "Oh, there it is. This is really <laughs> bad." So, yeah, don't don't do that when you're creating community. Although it's a shared experience, everybody probably had a bad oh, headache gosh, afterwards. That's true. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So what what are you working on? So I think what I'm working on is I haven't done anything here. And I mm-hmm. think I do struggle a bit with this program that I'm working on here is like online learning. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so it's recorded lectures. We meet for live tutorials. And mm-hmm. the saving grace, the thing I like the best is that they have to come for in-person labs a couple of times a semester on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. And so even that, like everyone's super irritated that they have to do it. And then by the end of the day, like they have someone else they know who, you know, because even I I really remember one day this one lady was like, I can't do any of these homework problems. blah 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 blah, And I was really stressed. And I was like, I'll talk to you about it at the end of the lab. And I came Mm -hmm. back to her and she was like, oh, no, no, I figured it all out at lunchtime. So and so helped me. You know, and you're like, oh, there's the magic. Like, that's that's what you needed to have. And so. I think that's great, but I wonder, I think here there is a little bit of a struggle with kind of convincing students to be on campus all the time, Mm -hmm. do you know? And like, I remember back in my day when like you would have four hours between a lecture, but then you would just sit on the grass and talk nonsense for four hours or Mm -hmm. whatever. But here I think students now, and this is how I am in my attitude too, is like, nah, maybe it's not worth going to campus today, you know? And I Mm -hmm. think... A lot of the lectures are being super like accommodating and awesome by having the recorded lectures available. So they're like, maybe it's not worth taking the bus over there today. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there is a little bit of just trying to recruit, like bring people back, mm-hmm. do you know. And so I've been having some thoughts about ways to do that. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe in the fall I can do some of those things, but I'm not sure how to. Of- oh, well, so years ago when I was a grad student here. I had something for the grad students called the low energy lunches and it was meant to be yeah it was like meant to be an opportunity for people to do very fairly general talks about their research so like the first time you're doing a research talk isn't at a conference Uh but then people would also talk about like science of superheroes or you know all of that kind of stuff and we had like yeah yeah and we had like a baking competition Mm. where you had to bake anyway it was super fun and yeah so I think maybe maybe that and then I have also noticed when I was teaching in-person labs the second years last year they're Mm -hmm. super into the paranormal why there's all of these secret there's some weird physics paranormal gateway that doesn't translate into professors of physics but (laughs) the students are into it so cool yeah so those are potential ways of encouraging people to come Yes, I think that's a good idea. You know, if you're like, well, I could either watch class on Zoom or I could go to class. That's not a very enticing decision. But if it's like, oh, but so and so is going to present about the science of superheroes at lunch. Yeah, I've got to go, you know, or, yeah. or I always go to this, this low energy lunches. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And I was thinking another thing that may be good is to just maybe like on Thursday, this first Thursday of the month, everyone goes for tea. 
the mm-hmm. professors are going to be there. And, and for some reason, I think a big thing in community building is convincing people that they're not going to be the only person sitting there staring at yes. you. You know what I mean? And so if it's just kind of like, we'll all be there, it's fine. You can come along if you want. Like that kind of Yeah, it's like thing. an event that you mm-hmm. can go to. It's not just like going to be awkwardly you and this other person yes he's like interviewing you by (laughs) yourself so yeah yeah I think that makes sense I mean definitely I mean I feel it too where it's like an activation energy to come back to campus all the time and I definitely at the beginning of this semester I was like I don't know I'm kind of enjoying working from home yeah but get it it as soon as I got over the activation energy I'm like oh no it is really good to just be there all day and um you know, you find the uses for the time, the interstitial time totally. that's actually great to do on campus rather. So anyway, you just need to, yeah, as soon as people get over that activation energy, I'm sure that they'll be more convinced. It's yeah. just getting them over that. Totally. Well, I love this, Claire. I love your ideas. Thanks a million. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.